Today we're continuing on our journey to find faith. For those of you who weren't here or listening at, as we started it, Jesus had asked his disciples a question, and the question was, would the Son of Man find faith when he returned to the earth? Now, to me, the obvious answer ought to be yes. And so, as I said, I want to, if, if Jesus tarries and doesn't return until late, then I want to make sure that people who I have been ministering to and others that I'm responsible for have faith. And if Jesus comes during my lifetime, then I want to be one of those people who raises their hand and say, yes, you can find faith in me. Now, again, as I said, this is not something to boast about because it is God who is the one who is the giver of faith. But I want us to go on this journey because as the scripture says, that without faith it is impossible to please God. Now, the unique thing about God is he doesn't, Try to hide faith. So when we're looking and, and journeying for faith and to find it, it's not like we are looking for a buried treasure and we've got to find the right treasure map and then figure out how to interpret that map and then go to a place where X marks the spot. God does things to assist us in finding faith. And so that's where we're going to be. This, this message is one of the steps God has uses to help us to find faith. And so continuing on in the book of the Gospel of John, at verse 6 of chapter 1, it says this, There came a man sent from God whose name was John. Now notice, the man was sent by God, sent from God, and he was named John. Now, this is not the John who's the author of the gospel. He's another who most people call John the Baptist. And that's his title. And so when people say John the Baptist, that's who they're referring to. Now, I'm going to change his title for the purpose of this message, because I know that, that I'm not going to overturn 2,000 years of history that calls John, John the Baptist. But I think his correct title should be John the Testifier or John the Witness. Because the next part of the verse says, He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. Notice, so he was sent by God to be one who was a witness that he might testify about the light, which is Jesus. So that, why? Not that he can say, well, I'm right. I know who Jesus is and you don't. No, that he testifies so that we might come to faith as well, so that we might believe through his witness, through his testimony. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. So again, it's making sure that we understand that John the testifier, John the Baptist, was not talking about himself, and he wasn't taking the uh, mantle upon himself, but he came simply to testify about the light. So again, following up John the Testifier, not necessarily John the Baptist. There was a true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. So we have this little parenthetical statement that, that John the uh, author of, of his gospel is kind of already reminding us that it is Jesus, the light, who created the world, who the world is sustained by him, and that even though he came to the Jewish people who was his people, they did not receive him. But there's hope. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so we're told here that even though the people who Jesus came to his own, and they didn't accept him, but whoever would believe that he would then give them the right to be children of God. 
So one of the benefits of finding faith and having faith is that we are going to be children of the living God. And as it went back, this is, I'm trying to go back here. And it says, says, to those who, who were of his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So the thing is not that everybody is a child of God, but to those who believe in Jesus and his authority. And then is that who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So this whole aspect of pursuing faith is not because we are Jews and are therefore by uh, DNA worthy to receive it, nor are we of the flesh in the sense of we're going to accomplish it in our own means that will do what it takes, nor of the will of man. I can't force myself to become a child of God or to have faith, but it is God who gives us faith. And so those who are born, not because of DNA, not because of of endurance, not because of their strength of the will, but because of God. Now it's going to go on to talk about John the testifier and what he ministry is all about. And so in John chapter 1, verse um, nine it says John testified about him and cried out, saying, "This is he who of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses; grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ." And so John is saying that Jesus came and he's the light. And he came, and even though the law was given, the law didn't benefit anybody because you couldn't realize faith or security of of faith through the law or keeping of the law. It was was a teacher, but it was something that we could never realize. However, when Jesus came, his grace his unmerited favor towards us and his truth were realized through Jesus Christ. So faith is a realization that we can have through Jesus and not simply a hope as in the law. Then it further goes on to say, but no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the father, he has explained him. And so we again see that Jesus is that exact representation of the glory of God. He is the son of God, not as we are going to be children of God, but that he is God, one part of the Trinity, one part of the Godhead. And so Jesus explains who God is through his actions and through his life. And then it's going to go on to about the testimony. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So they came expecting because John was baptizing and people who were coming in repentance of sins. And baptism wasn't a typical thing that Jews would do. If you wanted to become Jewish, there would be this Uh, cleansing and this baptism and other things that you would be required to do uh, to be part of the Jewish community. But John was baptizing for two reasons. One, as people came to repent of their sins and to acknowledge who God is, but he also did it for another reason. Which he's going to explain shortly. But he said, I'm not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. You see, they've come as, if you will, ambassadors to quiz John why he's doing what he's doing 
and so that they might write a report and give it back to the, the leaders of the religious community. Which is interesting, if the religious leaders thought that John might have been the Christ, rather than sending representatives, they should have gone themselves. And so John says, no, I'm not the Christ. So then they say, well, are you Elijah? Because there was a, a Old Testament prophecy that said that the Messiah would come after Elijah came. So they're saying, well, maybe, John, are you that person who's, who's mentioned saying that you're going to be a forerunner of the Christ? And he said, I am not. And are you the prophet? No. And he answered, no. Now, the prophet is found in, in Deuteronomy where the Jewish people are told that there will be another prophet rise up like Moses. So they're wondering, well, maybe the reason that, that John is baptizing and doing what he's doing is that he's like the, this prophet that's been prophesied. So he says, well, maybe you're the Messiah. No. Are you Elijah? No. Are you this prophet mentioned in Deuteronomy? And he says, no. So they said to him, who are you so that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? So they're saying, well, wait a minute. These no answers aren't going to be sufficient for us to write this report and give it back to our leaders at Jerusalem. And we've come a long way because they've gone uh, down past the Jordan and into a, a southern section and they're traveling and they go, well, we need to, to be effective in this report. So tell us who you say you are so we can tell our bosses what, how to answer. And he said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. So he's saying, I'm the one, I'm the forerunner. I'm the one that's making preparation for the Messiah so that his ministry will be more effective and it will straighten out the roads and do whatever. So he's saying, you missed the right prophets. I'm the one that Isaiah prophesied. Because now they had been sent from the Pharisees. So they're referring again to the fact that they're not there out of their own interest. They're out of there because they've been tasked with writing a report that says who John the Baptist, who I say John the Testifier is, and they have been sent by higher authorities. And so they said, so they asked him and said to him, why then are you baptizing if you're not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? So they're saying, why is it that you have authority to baptize? Now, again, we, we, we need to understand this because we don't want to go all the way back to Jerusalem for them to ask us this question again. So we're asking you, why is it that you're baptizing? And John answered them saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. And again, as you, we've been laid out in the prologue of John, in essence, he said, Jesus came to his own, and his own did not know him or comprehend him. And so he's, it's going and says, you don't know him, but I'm baptizing in water. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Now, John has said something very amazing in the Middle Eastern culture because one of the least worthy parts of the body was the foot. Uh, that's why when Jesus washed his disciples' feet, it was, it was so strange. And so John is saying, if you compare who I am, which John is later told of by Jesus that no one born of woman is greater than John. And he's saying, as Christ gave him that compliment to his disciple, he said, I am not even unworthy enough to be tasked as a servant to untie his sin. That's the relationship he sees that he has with the Son of God. Not that he's worthy, but that he's unworthy. 
These things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What an announcement. John, again, as the testifier, makes the announcement that Jesus is the Lamb of God, which should cause those who are somewhat familiar with the Scriptures to think of two occasions. One, when Abraham was required to sacrifice Isaac, and Isaac observed that there was no lamb, that Abraham told his son, God himself will provide the lamb. And John is saying, Jesus is that lamb. Also, as about three and a half years from this event, when Jesus is being sacrificed on a cross, the lambs are also being sacrificed on Passover. And Jesus, as the scripture says, is our Passover lamb. So John testifies to everyone that Jesus is that Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, not just of the Jewish people, but of everyone, which includes you and me. And he says, this is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. Now, if you've read some of the other gospels, you say, well, that's a little odd. Because Elizabeth, his mother, was with child pregnant with John about six months before Jesus was um, a person in that Mary was going to conceive. So John, in a chronological sense, was older than Jesus and started his ministry before Jesus. But John testifies, Jesus didn't start life at his birth. He was God, and he existed before me. And I did not recognize him so that he might be manifested to Israel. I came baptizing in water. So John had some reasons to baptize. They kept thinking, oh, you're baptizing because you're some prophet. And John is saying, no, I am baptizing to identify the Messiah. And he's going to tell us why that's the case. And John testifies saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven and remained on him. So John says, when I baptized Jesus, when I dunked him in the water and came up, the Spirit of God came upon him descending like a dove and not only descended upon him but remained on him I did not recognize him but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining upon him this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit so John goes I came to be a forerunner of the Christ, that I might set the stage for his ministry. And I came to identify the Messiah. And I was told by God when I baptized and that a dove, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and remained on the person that I baptized, he is the Messiah. And John says, when I did that with Jesus, I saw that as God had told me. I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. To John, again, as I say, yes, he was John the Baptist, but he was John the testifier, John the witness, who was sent by God to witness and to tell so that we might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So again, God is not trying to hide the ball. He's not trying to say, well, there's a bunch of different treasure maps that you can use to try to find the X marks the spot. 
God helps us. He sent people like John to be a witness to what Jesus was and did. And he acknowledged that Jesus existed before him, even though John was born on this earth before Jesus. And that John acknowledges that Jesus is the one worthy. And even though Jesus gives him great credit about his station as a prophet, he understands there is no comparison between him and the Son of God. And so, God helps us and assists us in finding faith because he sends people like John the Testifier to help us, to assist us in coming to belief. Now, sometimes that belief as we are on this road, maybe those of you haven't yet come to faith, but you're willing to at least consider it. Or there are others who say, I, I have maybe some faith, and as the person said in the scriptures, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I, I'm kind of shaky. Help me to understand. Or those who feel that we are mature in our faith, and yet as we understand, as difficulties come and persecutions and other things, that we need to be solid and strong in our faith. And so all of us on this journey to find faith are doing so, so that we either might find it initially, or find it anew, or find it strengthened. And so just as John was a testifier, a witness to what God has done, we too, who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world we should also be witnesses and testifiers of what God has done in our life. What we have seen and what we have helped. Not to give the testimony to say, look how wonderful I am. But as John did, I'm not worthy even to untie, and I'm not even worthy to have been given faith. But because God is so awesome, and his love and his grace he has given that to me. And I want to tell you, if he gave it to me, he certainly will give it to you. Because as we will see, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And so the challenge for us today is to both to search and find faith and strengthen faith and be committed to our faith but to also be like John the Testifier and to say, yes, Lord, I will tell and I will be like John. You sent John to testify, to be a witness so that others might believe. And I'm not too sure how my testimony might impact others, but I will give my testimony because who knows from what has happened in my life may cause others to, to come to faith and to understand. As we give this testimony, we do so to honor God, not as some seem to do, as they give their testimony about all the things that they had done in their lives and how all the wicked things that they'd done, and as they talk about it, seem to be sad that they're not living that life. Instead saying, that is who I was, but this is who I am because of God, and this is who I shall be because of my Savior. And all of God's people said,